Because through ignorance we may not succeed. So we must be knowledgeable. We must also be conversant with the principles that should be applied for a successful warfare. The kingdom of God is a kingdom of principles. We must be able to be conversant with the principles which we must use. The principles we must apply. Very may be successful in this world. We must also know the technicalities that could be involved during the warfare. Uh, if we are going to succeed, finally we must also know how spiritual our spiritual stand as the warfare goes on. We must know our spiritual stand as we continue in the warfare. And when we have that one in mind, You'll be able to apply the principles we are learning. And we shall continue living victoriously in the Christian world. Today I want to deal with the, our two natures. The very important part of it. Because many times Christians suffer from what sometimes seems to be our dual personality within. Yes, we, we are two people in one. And that gives Christians most problems. Because you find at one time we display in our lives the lovely qualities of Christ's life. In other words, we portray Christ very well. We are joyful, we are peaceful. We are kind, we are gracious, and we feel good. But at other times, though this way we may be sharp spoken, you find we may be short tempered, and we also and also hard to live with us. We don't want to be this way, but this is how we are. Even though we try to be sweet, we are nice and wonderful. We end up being sour, mean and miserable. We are not being miserable of understanding why our things change. It seems we are being pulled in two different directions at one time. So we feel as if there is a great warfare being waged within us. And that appears we are always on the losing side. So it's important for us to understand what we mean by these two natures. Because that is the old nature and there is the new nature. And we should understand how they function and how they work in our lives. So the enemy may not have advantage of our Christian life. 
I read several scriptures. Jasoma mani ko mistari kada wakada. And I believe the Lord will help us. Nina minya kwamba Mungu atatusaidia. Let me begin with First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14. Nianze na Wakorintho wa kwanza 2:14. But the nature of men received not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Basi mwananamu wa tabia ya asili, hayapokei mambo ya roho wa mungu. Maana kwake huyo ni ukuzi. Wala hawezi kuyafahamu. Wakua ya chambuliwa kwa jinsi ya roho There is a natural man Kuna yule mtu wa tabia ya asi The Bible is telling us the natural man cannot receive the things of the spirit of God Nina tuambia kwamba mtu wa asi hawezi ya kapokea mambo ya roho They are actually foolishness to him Hakika ni ukuzi kwa ke Nina can he know them Wala haya ya fahamu Because they can only be discerned through the spirit kwa maana anaweza tu ya katambuliwa kwa panjia ya mohoni So every unbeliever has one nature Kwa hivyo kila asia mini ana asi ainamone The nature inherited from Adam the first man Ile asili amalo alihidi kutoka kwa adamu mwanadamu wa kwanza Any person who was not accepted in Jesus as his personal Savior Mtu ya yote ya mwaya haja mkubali yesu kama mkozi wa maisha yake He has only one nature Ana asili mwaya tu The nature he got from, or rather, the nature we got from our first parent Ile asili ya mwaya tulimokea kutoka kwa zazi wetu wa kwanza In fact the Bible describes a regenerate man as the man without the spirit Akika bibia ina mutakua mtu huyo kama mtu asie na roo So this is man as he is by nature Kwa hivyo huyo ni manadamu ama bimadam kama bile alivyo tu kwa njia ya kiasi Because he is a part, he is not a part of Christ Kwa mana yeye si sehemu ya Christo, mana hayuko nani ya Christo So every unbeliever is operating with one nature Now in 2 Corinthians 5.17 The Bible says therefore even men being in Christ is a new creature All things are passed away and behold all things are become new Then I say Hata inekua mtu akiwa ndani ya Christo Hamekua kumbekini ya kale ya mepita na nzama ya mekua masu When an unbeliever believes and is born again Wakati mtu wa siya amini, ana amini na anazali wa mara ya kini Or when a sinner accepts Jesus as his personal savior Ama kipini ya mbako mwenye dhani ya nabubali Yesu kwa mbukosi wa masha ya He receives a complete new nature Mara mwenye anapokea uasili upia Praise the Lord Amen When somebody hears about Christ Mtu anaposikia kukusu Yesu And receives Jesus as his own personal savior Na anapokea Yesu kama mokozi wa maisha ya He receives a new nature Anapokea asili upia Which he was not born with Amayo haku zali wanaye He receives this nature because he has now been born by Christ Anapokea yu asili upia kwa mana amesha zaniwa sasa na kristo Initially he had the nature of the first man Hapo awali alikuwa na asili ya mwanadamu wa kwanza The nature which he was born with Ile asili ya mwanadamu wa kwanza The old nature Asili ya kare And here he receives Jesus Christ Na hapa anapokea Yesu Christo Now then he receives another new nature Anapokea asili mpia Amen Amina This nature he receives He asili amayo anayokea Is the nature of God Ni asili ya mungu It's not just the nature of man Si asili ya kibini ada We, the Bible tells us we have the first man or the first Adam Who was the first created by God Bine na tomia kumba tuna Adam wa kwanza Abaya alimungu na mungu In 1 Corinthians 15.5 And so it is written The first man Adam was made a living soul And the last Adam was made a quickening spirit 
Ndivyo ilivyoandikwa mtu wa kwanza Adamu akawa nafsi iliyo hai. Adamu wa mwisho ni roho ye, yeye kuhuisha. So there is the first Adam there is the last Adam. Kwa hivyo kuna Adamu wa kwanza na kuna Adamu wa mwisho. Immediately you accept Jesus you are given a new nature. Mara moja unapopokea Yesu Kristo unapatiwa asili mpya. The Bible says you are a new creature. So you are given another nature. Kwa hivyo unapewa asili mpya. So a child of God has got two natures. Kwa hivyo watoto wa Mungu wana asili mbili. We have the nature that you received when you were born by Adam the first age. Tuna asili ya kwanza ambayo tulipokea kutoka kwa Adamu mzazi wetu wa kwanza. But here is the last Adam who is Christ. Na hapa kuna Adamu wa mwisho ambaye ni Kristo. When you are born again, ulipozaliwa mara ya pili, he gives you his nature. Anakupa asili yake. So you find you have got two natures in, in you. Na kwa hivyo unapata una asili mara mbili ndani yako. This is the the new personality is coming in. Na hapa ndipo asili aina mbili ama utu mara mbili unaingia. So we, we need to understand how to go and how to stay with this two natures. Na kwa hivyo tunapaswa kuelewa jinsi ya kusawazisha hizi asili aina mbili. Because they are quite opposite to each other. Kwa maana zote mbili ni ibada. One is wood bird. Moja What is wood bird? Yeah, moja asili moja ni mbovu kabisa. And the other one he is really good. Na ile nyingine ni nzuri mno. But they are in one person. Lakini zote mbili si ndani ya mtu mmoja. So we need to know how to live. Na kwa hivyo tunapaswa tunapaswa kuelewa jinsi ya kuishi katika hizi asili mbili. You see there is where the dual, this is where the dual personality comes now in. Na hapa ndipo ah uh, mtu ana aina mbili Kwa mapenzi yake mwenyewe 
akaichukua lile tunda we don't see the serpent taking the fruit and giving to him atuoni popote yule nyoka akitunda tunda na kumpa ao so there is what the devil did and there is what Eve and Adam did kwa hivyo katika mchakato ule kuna kile ambacho shetani alifanya na kuna kile awa alifanya there is a sign we can blame the devil and there is a sign we can blame Eve and Adam kuna wakati ama kuna upande ambao tunaweza tukamlaumu shetani na eneo lingine tukamlaumu Adam na Hawa praise the lord bwana so anything coming to your life kwa hivyo kila ajabu Anything you allow which is not righteous. Jambo lolote ambalo unaliruhusu ndani yako ambalo si haki. In the same manner. Kwa njia hiyo. What happened in the garden of Eden? Kwa njia hiyo ambayo ilitengeneka pale shambani ile. There is a part we can blame the devil and there is a part we can blame you. Kuna sehemu tutamlaumu shetani na kuna sehemu tutakulaumu wewe. So when we know our part, kwa hivyo tunapojua sehemu hiyo and we deal with Then we can lay the blame on the devil. Basi tunaweza tukamlaumu shetani. Hey, praise the Lord. Amen. Then the scripture in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 27. Kuna maandiko katika Waefeso 2:27. Neither give place to the devil. Wala msimpe ndilisi nafasi. The very short script. Ni maandiko ama ni mstari mfupi mno. He says Neither give place to the devil. Kwa mstari unasema wala usimpe ndilisi nafasi. And when we talk of giving the devil a place, na tunaponena juu ya kumpa ndilisi nafasi, we are not talking of the devil coming and taking the place post. Atuneni atuneni juu ya shetani kuja na kujinyakulia nafasi kimabafu. It is I, it is you willingly ni nini the enemy a plus ni nini ama wewe kwa makusudi kumpa shetani nafasi the one thing i understand and i know is that the devil and his demons have got no power over the weakest christian jambo moja ninajua na ninaelewa na ninaamini ni kwamba shetani hana nguvu hata kwa yule mkristo mrefu kabisa the one who has got the sin the devil has got no power yule mtu ameokoka hivi karibuni shetani hana nafasi au hana nguvu dhidi yake Another preacher said when the devil finds the weakest Christian kneeling down he trembles Mwambili mwingine akasema ya kwamba shetani anapompata yule Mkristo mdhaifu kabisa akiwa magotini anatetemeka It is not until a Christian gives a plus for the devil and he had in Christo and a poor question time in a pass that's why the scripture is telling us neither give plus to the devil and you have to come and you can say that one of the ones in the ministry in a pass it is me to give the devil the plus the meaning in the ministry in a pass amen amen It was him to pick the fruit. Alikuwa ni awa alikuwa ile tunda. She was not pushed. Hakusukumiwa. She was only given words. Alipewa tu maneno. There was the power of our will. Kulikuwa na nguvu ya mapenzi yake. So she used her will to pick the fruit. Kwa hivyo akatumia mapenzi yake kulitunda lile tunda. God can never oppress or force you to do something. Mungu hawezi akakusudia kufanya kitu. He can save you by force. Hawezi akakukomboa kwa kwa njia ya kimabafu. The Bible says I stand at the door and knock. Mbele sana ya kwamba ninasimama mlangoni na kurudisha. He can break the heart to come into your life. Hawezi akavunja mlango wa moyo akaingia. It's you to willingly accept him. Ni wewe kwa mapenzi yako mwenyewe ukamkubalia. So the Bible is telling us we should not give place to the devil. Bible Biblia inatuambia kwamba tusimpe ndisi nafasi. And that's why I'm saying the weakest Christians, the devil has got no power over the weakest Christians. Na ndio sababu ninasema kwamba 
Shetani ana uwezo dhidi ya Mkristo aliyemlaika bless the Christian gives the devil a place isipokuwa yule Mkristo ampe Shetani nafasi when the devil is given a place in one's life wakati ambao ibilisi anapewa nafasi katika maisha ya Mkristo if you give him place unapopa nafasi what he does he uses the old nature in you to bring about your downfall anachokifanya ni kwamba anachukua ile asili ya zamani ndani yako ili akuangushe i am saying we have got two natures nimesema tuna asili mbili you have got the, the old nature and the new nature tuna asili ya zamani na asili mpya
Hey, praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. Can we look suddenly on this holy nature? Angalie kwa ufupi hii asili ya zamani. Every every child born by human generation has the old nature. Kila mtoto anayezaliwa katika vizazi vya kibinada ana asili ya zamani. No father the teachers and child to cry when she needs something. Hakuna mzazi anayefundisha mtoto kulia anapokuwa anahitaji. But she will react to things lakini ata 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 tefanya kitu kuhusiana na mama. She can even bite oh, the breast of the mother. Anaweza ata lingata titi la mama yake. Why? Who has told the child to do that? Ni nani aliyemfunza mtoto kufanya hivyo? This is the only nature. Hiyo ni asili ya zamani. It is all the old nature is called the so called old self. Hiyo asili ya zamani ni lile linaloitwa ubinafsi wa zamani. Utu wa zamani. All the sinful nature ama uh, asili ya nafsi. In the book of Romans, Kawaruni chapter 6 verse 6, sita sita. Knowing this that our old man is crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed that henceforth we should not serve sin Kijua neno hili ya kuwa utu wetu wa kale ulisulubishwa pamoja naye ili mwili wa dhambi ubatilike tusi tumikie dhambi tena Anything which is on the cross is on the process of die. Chochote ambacho kiko msalabani kiko katika hali ya kufa. He that does not carry his cross and follow me, he can never be my disciple. Yeyote asiyobeba msalaba wake na kunifuata hawezi akawa mwanafunzi wangu. Why should you carry the cross of Christ on a daily basis? Kwa nini unapaswa kubeba msalaba wa Kristo kila siku? And I'm not talking about hanging a cross at your neck. Nasimaanishi kubeba kwa shingo msalaba wa mbao. Yeah. 
Biblia kwako kwa ibada zote. Even you are giving your property to the church. Hata kutoa mali zako kwa kanisa. It can never make you right with God. Hawezi kukupa haki mbele za Mungu. You can be baptized. Hawezi kubatizwa. You can have a new name. Naweza kukupa na jina jipya. But if you have not been made right with God by Christ Jesus. Lakini ni wako ungepewa haki na Mungu katika Kristo Yesu. In fact, for Ephesians 4, 
Ephesians 2 says like this. That he put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful love. That he put off concerning the former conversation. It does not say that Jesus will come and put it off for you. I said, Yes, Mama, yes, That is your part. That is your responsibility. He is put off. If you don't put it off, you are the heart of we should understand this old nature is unchangeable. You can't even improve it. Yes, you can give it sacrament, but it can't change. You can this old nature is unchangeable. It is. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> when I'm looking at you, saints, I know you are of the old nature. But you are trying to tell me more. You have it. <laughs> There's no way you can run away from this. I'll tell you more why you can't change it. You can educate it, you can dress it, but you can't be satisfied. It will still remain evil and corrupt. And in fact, God has pronounced dead sentence against our inherited old nature. That's why we read in Romans 8 verse 3. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sin for flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Amen. So you condemned, he gave a dead sentence to the old nature. So the old nature is corrupt. When you go saved, it did not leave you. It is still in you. Yes. And that's why sometimes you feel the body waking up. The old nature. If you do not, not, you do not, you do not control it, it will now begin leading you. If you are led by the flesh, then you will die. Can we briefly look at the new nature? Because you have seen these two natures are in us. The old nature and the nature. Any person who has not been regenerated has only one nature. But if you have been born again, you have two natures in you. That is why there is a big difference between someone who has been saved. And somebody who has not been saved. You can find somebody who is in the old nature. He is very quiet. He, he looks to be very polite. And sometimes, 
saying sir tell me to be married by such people na mara nyingine wote ule wana 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 jaribika kuolewa na watu wana mnaishi mtu mnyamaa are you just oh please it's for love you let dada anakwambia ni mnyamaa ni mtu mnyamaa so i think i can stay with him where ni naona tutaweza ishi pamoja He can be polite but the old nature is not polite. Anaweza akawa mtulivu lakini hali yake ya zamani si tulivu. Yet it works up. Inapomka. You look for the politeness you not get it. Utatafuta ule utulivu hautaukata. Kabisa. But if you are saying you have got two natures, the old and the new. Lakini wewe umeokoka una asili mbili ya kale na mpya. Now let's look at this new nature in you. Basi kwa tutazame hii asili mpya ndani yako. We are reading Second Corinthians. Nasoma Korinto wa pili chapter 5 5:17. 5:17. Therefore, if a man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Hata imekuwa mtu akiwa ndani ya Kristo amekuwa kiumbe kingi. Ya kale yamepita, tanzama yamekuwa mapya. So the very moment you receive Jesus Christ as your personal savior. Mara tu unapompokea Yesu Kristo kama mwokozi wako, you get born again. Unazaliwa tena. And you receive a new nature. That very moment you receive that new nature. Na mara hiyo tu unapokea asili mpya. It is not the only nature in root. Sio ile asili ya zamani ambayo imefanya kuwa bora. It is not the old nature born by a bad child. Sio ile asili mpya ya zamani imebebea. It is totally a new nature. Lakini ni asili mpya kabisa. John 1 first John through 13. Yohana 1:12 hadi 15. But as many as received him to them gave him power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name which we are born not of blood nor of the will of the flesh nor of the will of man but of God bali wote waliompokea aliwapa uwezo wa kufanyika watoto wa Mungu ndio wale walio waliaminio jina lake walio zaliwa si kwa damu wala si kwa mapenzi ya mwili wala si kwa mapenzi ya mtu bali kwa Mungu That is why Jesus was not born or was not uh, He was put in the womb of men. Aliingizwa katika tumbo la mwanadamu. Not the natural means we would be born by getting children. Si kwa njia ya kikawaida ya asili ambapo ambayo unatumika watoto kuzaliwa. The blood Jesus was a holy and righteous blood. Dame Yesu ilikuwa takatifu na yenye haki. It had no stain of sin. Haikuwa na tone la dhambi. It had no stain of the old nature. Haikuwa na tone la ali ama asili ya zamani. No wonder the Bible tells us we overcame by the blood of the lamb. Si ajabu Biblia inatuambia kwamba tulishinda kwa damu ya mwana kondoo. Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. So spiritually when you are born again. Kwa hivyo kwa njia ama kiroho unapozaliwa tena. The new nature that you receive as a child of God. Asili mpya unayopokea kama mtoto wa Mungu. It is the nature which was in the blood of Jesus. Ni asili iliyokuwa ndani ya damu ya Yesu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is why the Holy Spirit comes to indwell you. Hii ndio sababu Yesu Kristo anakuja kuishi ndani yako. No the Holy Spirit comes to live in you. Ndio sababu Yesu Roho Mtakatifu Samahani anakuja kuishi ndani yako. Hides a place and he stay. Anapata mahali. He was the nature he can inhabit. Anapata asili ya mama anaweza kuishi. Tukufu kwa Mungu. We are very much and you are very much different from a person who was not been born again. Wewe ni tofauti kabisa na mtu ambaye hataka mtu. You are in a different level. Mungu kwa viwango tofauti. He no area so far. Katika nyanja zote za maisha. Oh, Glory to God. Tukufu kwa Mungu. That's why we are praying. Sababu tumesoma. As many as received him. 
Bali watu waliompokea ili we give the power to become the sons of God. Ali wapo uwezo wa kufanyika watoto wa Mungu. As many as received Jesus. Watu waliompokea Yesu. They received his new nature. Walipokea asili yake. They became the sons of God. Walifanyika wana wa Mungu. Even them that believe in his name. Hata wale waliowaliaminiwa jina lake. They were not born of the blood of human beings. Hawakuzaliwa kwa damu ya mwanadamu. They were not born through the will Na asili ya zamani 
Shetani anajiona ndani yako. Let's finish. So continue next Wednesday first and no John 1 first chapter 13. Let's finish there today. John chapter 1 first chapter 13. Tutakamilishia hapa leo Yohana 1 12 na 13. Okay, I'm sorry. It's first Peter. First Peter 1. Then first 3 and 4. Samahani, ni waraka wa kwanza kwa Petro, moja, msari wa tatu na wani. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mass, abundant mercy, has begotten us again into a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and 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 well and that faded not away is some in heaven for you. Ahimiliwe mungu baba wa wa bwana wetu Yesu Kristo. Yes. Amaya kwa rehema zake nyingi alituzaa mara ya pili ili tupate tumaini lenye uzima kwa kufufuka kwake Yesu Kristo katika wafu. Tupate na uridhi usio haribika usio na uchafu usio nyauka ulio tunzwa binguni kwa akili so this new nature within us is a very large kwa hivyo hii asili mpya ndani yetu the very large uzima of the risen lord who is upon the throne of god ni ule uzima wa bwana aliyefuka aketie kwenye kiti cha enzi cha and that new nature is imparted in us by the Holy Spirit. Na hiyo kasi lupia inapachikuwa ndani yetu kwa roho kwa It's great. Nidamu. You need to know you have another nature. Na itaki kukia kwa kwa kuna kasi lupia. In front of all you to know the whole nature is still in you. Nizuri pia kukwela kwa kwa kasi ya zamani. But it can never control you. Na lakini haiwezi kwa kukia. Because the new nature is the nature of the resurrected Jesus. Mwana, asi mbia, ni asi ya Christo alifu. And then we continue from there next to when it's going to stand for the presence of the Lord. Tutaendelea pale, juma tango yayo, basi kunawezi kukasi mama. It's wonderful when we come, you come to know who you are. Ni damo la kusara sana, unapogelewa sisi mbina. And when you are reacting to things, you know how to react. Na wakati unashumulikia mambo, unajua jinsi ya kuya shumulikia. There is a time to talk, there is a time to be quiet. Na wakati wa uongea, na wakati wa kunyamasa. So tell me just you listen. Na wakati wa kusikiliza. And with the old nature tells you speak, you tell it, I cannot speak. Na asili ya zamani, inabamia nena, unayamia siyomi. You crucified. Unaisulikisha. Lift up your hands. Nwa mikono ya. Just tell the Lord, thank you. I have come to know who I am through the help of the Holy Spirit. And I am going to live a victorious Christian life. Father, we thank you for your goodness and for your mercy. We thank you for what you have made us to be, Lord. You have come to live in us, Lord. You have given us that nature. The very nature of God. And that today we have power to live like the sons of God. We thank you, Holy Father. God bless everyone that has had this lesson. Give them grace to understand. Help us, my father, as we continue with the teaching. In Jesus' name, your prayer and believe. Can you say amen?